John Fung used to talk about how neat and clean a John Mun was about his surroundings. Even the rags that were used for wiping off your feet were always kept clean, neatly folded. The area around the monastery where he was staying in the forest was always well swept. And this was an important part of the training that Ajahn Mun passed on. There was a series of Dharma talks, or a theme of Dharma talks sometimes you hear in Thailand. Not so much in the forest tradition, but in ordinary, everyday monasteries, what they call the rewards of merit. And John Fuang used to make a few snide comments about them because the rewards seemed awfully large in comparison with the little deeds. But there's one of the rewards that touches on just this point. I say that by keeping the monastery clean, one of the rewards is wisdom and discernment. And it's interesting to think about the connection, because it relates very directly to the mind. Keep the mind clean, and you're going to gain a lot of discernment. And so what's the connection? Well, one, when you're dealing with sweeping up a place, you get very intimately acquainted with it. If you wipe down a floor every day, you're very well acquainted with that floor. You sweep a particular area every day, you're very well acquainted with it, where all the roots are, where all the, the branches are, where the trees are, everything. Because you have to look very carefully to see where the dirt is. And you can reflect on the fact you sweep up wee leaves every day. Well, where do the leaves come from? They're, they're leaves because there are trees. You think about your own mind. The reason you have suffering is because there are these defilements. There's something in the mind that keeps producing it. You've got to look for the source. So get you thinking about your own mind. And also, when you keep a place clean, you see any the least little bit of uncleanliness. And John Fuang's image was of a, of a room. If you don't dust a room every day, it just becomes a dusty film all over everything. And then new dust comes in, you don't notice it, because it just gets combined with the old dust that's already there. But if you dust it every day, and then the least little bit of dust comes in, you notice, you see it. It's the same with the mind. You keep try to keep the mind clean. Any greed, anger, and delusion comes in that you notice, and you try to keep it away, keep it away. Clean it up, clean it up. Then the next morning something new comes in, you notice it right away. Because it's not just part of the normal flow of the mind. You see it in contrast to the mind when it was clean, when it was bright. In the same way, we keep the, the parking lot up here well swept every day. One of the advantages is that if any animals come through, we see their tracks. A snake goes across the parking lot. We don't maybe not see the snake, but we do see its tracks. Bobcats come up, squirrels run around, rabbits run around. We see their tracks clearly. We know who's been there because we keep the place well swept. So it's the same with the mind. Greed, anger, and delusion come into the mind. And if you just let them come in, come in, come in, you don't really notice it after a while. It seems to be the normal way of the mind. Almost as if it were these things were permanent inhabitants. But if you try to keep the mind clean every time something comes up that's obviously causing suffering, look into it, see what you can do, at the very least not to let it take over. So it doesn't hang on, doesn't leave a residue. That way, the next time it comes in, you'll know. You'll see it. The cleaner you keep the mind, the more obvious the comings and goings of these things are going to be. So 
and you get very well acquainted with the ways of the mind. The more precise you are about any little thing that comes in that's going to disturb your concentration, that's going to disturb your peace of mind. The more refined your concentration, the more clearly you see these things. So when you get the mind to settle down, it's like cleaning out your mind. And then you try to keep it clean. In the beginning, it may be a major job. It's like going into a room that nobody's cleaned for years and years and years. And to haul everything out, decide what stays, what goes, and then the things that are really necessary, the things you want in the room, you move back in. But then from that point on, it's a lot easier. Just a little bit of dusting every day, making sure things that don't accumulate. And the room becomes a lot more livable. The same with your mind. The cleaner the mind stays. In the beginning, it's going to take a lot of work to get it all cleaned out. Or if you let it go for a long while, then have to start meditating again. Okay, It's going to take a while to clean it out. But once it's been cleaned out, you've sorted things out and got the mind to settle down. Then from that point on, whenever the mind is not settled down, you notice it. Even the least little bit, but you, all you have to do is dust, dust here, dust there. The important thing is that you're quick to see these things arise and catch them in time. To think about the meditation as being like cleaning out the mind, weeding the mind. Again, there's a good analogy there. If you just cut off the weed at the ground level, it's going to grow back again. At some point you're going to have to uproot it, but still having it cut off at the ground level is better than not cutting it off at all, because if it doesn't get cut off, it's, the flowers are going to go to seed, and then the seeds are going to spread around, and you're going to have more weeds. So when we're meditating, it's like cutting off the weeds at ground level when you're getting the mind concentrated. Okay, Then from there, the discernment is what goes down and digs out the roots to see, well, where do these things come from? These defilements in the mind. A lot of people don't like to hear the word defilement. They say, what's wrong with greed, anger, delusion? They have their good side. But once you've really gotten the mind clear for a while, then you notice that these things really do cloud it. They obscure it. It's the people who have never really seen the mind clean and clear who object to the idea of these things being called, called defilement. So try to get the mind to settle down and then think of that sense of ease spreading through the body, your awareness spreading through the body. And then any thoughts of greed, anger, delusion, fear, jealousy, whatever, as they come, you can recognize them as things you don't want to get involved with. You don't have to chase them away. They, if you don't get involved, they go. It's like they're coming around offering things for sale. And they may be insistent, they really want to sell their wares to you, but if you don't show them any interest, they'll go away. The mind can settle down. The more you chase them around, the less chance you have of getting the mind to be still. And then once it's still, okay, even the slightest movement comes up, you see it. You can also begin to see connections. That's where the discernment part comes in. Discernment is seeing the connection between the cause of suffering and the suffering itself, that they do arise together, they pass away together. The cause of suffering is something that the mind does. The suffering is something that it feels. And when you see the connection, when you see that what the mind is doing is coming out of ignorance, you do your best to put all your powers of knowing into the area where the ignorance is, and you begin to see where these things come from. So the clearer your powers of knowing, the more all around, the more constant they are, the closer you're going to get to where the root, real root of these things lies. Then you can pull it out. The 
but whatever level of mind you're able to clean, do your best to keep it clean every day. Don't, don't get careless about this, because after all the dust builds up, and then it becomes just a normal thing. More dust comes, well, big deal, because there's so much dust there already. But the problem with the dust, it's like it's like the weeds. They take over after a while. Or it's like a place that hasn't been kept clean. All kinds of things can live in the, the dirt and in the piles of junk in the corner. And after a while, you can't live comfortably in the mind at all. So you can't be careless. Keep the mind clean as clean as you can, day in, day out, day in, day out. That's job number one. And as a result, you really get to know the mind. You just accept everything as it comes and goes. You never really know anything. You never really understand anything. You're taking the position of just being passive, passive. Oh, this comes, okay. Oh, that comes, okay. Dust fills up the room, okay. A wind blows it clean a little bit, okay. You never understand anything. You never get intimate with anything in the mind, intimate to see the comings and goings and the causes and effects. Because when you get down on your hands and knees and you polish that floor every day, you know the floor very well. And you see the least little bit of dust or dirt that comes in. And you catch it in time, so you don't have to live with the dust and the dirt always. And other people don't have to live with your dust and dirt either. So this is not just for your own sake, it's for everybody around you. One time when I was going into Bangkok, one of the duties of a monk, when you moves into a, a room or a hut someplace, is to clean it out as much as possible. And going into Bangkok one day and was cleaning out the room where I was going to stay, this Western monk who had been to Burma for many years, in and out. As long as he had a Burmese visa, he'd go to Burma. When he, the visa ran out, he'd come back to Thailand, make another request for a visa at the Burmese embassy, and then just kind of cool his heels waiting until the Burmese finally gave him his new visa. Well, he had just come back from Burma and decided to check out the various places in Bangkok where he knew Western monks might be. So he came by and saw me wiping down the floor. And he had just come from another place where another American monk had come down from the north, was at another monastery, wiping down the floor of his room. He said, you Thai monks, all you spend all your time just wiping down the floors. I told him, well, that's, that's where the practice begins. Without that, it doesn't have a foundation. Having a sense of cleanliness is an important part of the training, both inside and out. 